Hello. Hello. Hi. Can you see me? Can you see me now? Ooh. This is actually um, pretty appropriate, given that our next talk is on cloud computing. One guy, one guy. I thought that was good, whatever. Last talk of the day, we're nearly there. How's everybody doing? Who said Wu? Right there. Can we have more people like Miss Wu over here? Woo! God. You guys are going to have just the worst night. Uh, so, Formula One is a data-driven sport. Who knew? During each race, 120 sensors on each car generate 3 gigabytes of data, and 1,500 data points are generated each second. Using Amazon SageMaker, Formula One's data scientists are training deep learning models with 65 years of historical race data to extract critical race performance statistics make race predictions, and give fans insight into split-second decisions and strategies adopted by teams and drivers. That's, that's really cool. I didn't actually read this before I came out here. That's really cool. Um, so to show us how AWS, Amazon Web Services, uh, and Formula One are innovating at speed, please welcome the Vice President of Cloud Architecture Strategy of AW for AWS, Adrian Crockerft. Okay, so we're going to start off by making a little bit of noise. How's your adrenaline levels right now? Medium, afternoon, need another coffee. So let's, let's just, I'm going to play 44 seconds. There'll be a test, so pay attention, okay? Crank it up. Okay, how many AWS logos were there in that 44 seconds clip? Anyone counting? So why are there AWS logos there? Why would AWS be doing something with Formula One? And this is, this is the basic reason. 500 million people watch Formula One every year. We were looking, for one thing, we were looking for customers, but we were looking for brand advertising, particularly aimed at the European market. That was one piece. And by sponsoring one of the most uh, watched sports in the world, we were able to do a deal where we were providing technology to Formula One and putting a logo on TV across the world. So this is what's actually happening. We can go look up the case study, but Formula One's moving the vast majority of its infrastructure from on-premise data centers to AWS over the next few years. We're just starting right now. This was announced in uh, July this year. Um, we're going to work on race strategies, data tracking systems, broadcast insights. We have a lot of services, particularly artificial intelligence services, particularly ones that can watch video and find the interesting bits. And we're going to deliver new race metrics to enhance the sport. We're seeing this in more and more sports now. If you're into sports technology, enhancing sports, enhancing the fans' experience of the sports is actually a really interesting area. And it's an area where AI is becoming an interesting uh, technology. So I'm going to break this into three pieces. I'll start by talking about the cars, then talk about the races, then talk about the fans. So cars. Unlike many other racing series where all the cars are the same and it's about the driver, Formula One is a constructor's championship. Every car is different. There are manufacturers involved in it. I mean, this is two different wing mirrors. Uh, review mirrors and two different front wings from this year. The front wings are now becoming insanely complex and they are changing every week because F1 cars are, are absolutely at the pinnacle of technology. They're continuously developed. This is the Ferrari car from last year to this year. They made it a bit longer. It turned out that that made a big difference. It's one of the fastest cars this year. Every day they run the car, they tweak it. That's normal for racing. 
But every week, there's new parts they're putting on the car. They're turning around new parts in one week. Ma design, manufacture, delivery, get it on the car. One week later, it's a better car. And every year, there's a completely new car. So the F1 organization influences the rules. One of the things that happened this year was a new driver protection thing called the halo. The picture you can see there of the white car, there's, it, it's, it protects, it's around the head of the driver. You see there's a black mark on that halo. That was a tire of a car that went over another car. And when the tire hits the halo, it would otherwise have hit the driver's helmet, right? So that's, yeah, I think that halo did its job. Um, we're also working with Formula One to simulate future rules with aerodynamic models for coming cars coming in the next few years. And there's a lot of design verification that goes on to make sure the cars are the right shape and conform to the rules. 21 races around the world. And in fact, this morning, is anyone here from uh, Vietnam? Han Hanoi this morning gets a race. This is announced today. There will be a, in 2020, so one and a half years from now, I think, there will be a Formula One race in Hanoi. So they're just going more and more global, bringing this race around the world. But races are sometimes only a week apart. They fly everything from one race to another. They pack it up on Sunday night, they put it in trucks on Sunday, depending on, it flies or drives to the next race. It gets there on Wednesday. They install a complete data center in one day. It has to work perfectly for, by Thursday afternoon. By anyone here involved in building data centers, this is crazy stuff. You, don't, you can't build data centers that quick. That's the inside, the, this picture here on the right. That's a broadcast center inside the data center that is shipped from one race to the next. So the live video feed is made on the racetrack and broadcast once to the world. They built a wireless system that when they explained to me what it did, I thought this was impossible. I mean, it's hard to make Wi-Fi work. They have cars driving around, streaming live video, multiple channels, while driving at 200 miles an hour, and all the cars are doing it all the time. It's an incredible thing. It's at the limit of physics. It's an incredible piece of technology. They're storing additional cameras on the car, so there's an e just an enormous amount of video storage happening during every race. And there's detailed telemetry, so they tell the car when, the, when there's a, 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 an accident on the track, the light comes on in the car, so the telemetry is working in both directions. The race technology, the, um, it, the, the teams operate, they do performance analysis and simulation to tune the cars set up. They monitor the health, you know, every now and again an engine blows up, but they can tell when that's about to happen, maybe back off a bit. And then there are strategy simulations. There's this Monte Carlo simulation, typically lots of very detailed analytics to figure out what is the next best thing to do. Think about your company and a high speed strategy. How are you modeling your strategy depending on what your competitors are doing? They also have a live broadcast service, unfortunately not available in Portugal uh, because of the broadcast rights, but in the US, the Formula One owns the full broadcast rights for OTT, for over-the-top transmissions, so you can pull out your iPad or your TV or your phone and watch the race, and you can also choose the car you want. You can say, I just care about Vettel, or I just care about Hamilton, I want to see what he's seeing for the whole race, and you can follow that car. Think about where that goes as we start to personalize the experience of the sport for each driver, for each team, for each country you're in, rather than having one global broadcast feed. This is kind of part of the direction we'll get to in the next few years. In esports, right, we have, we have gaming going on that's tied. There's an entire season of esports uh, racing happening alongside the races. Now, you think about Formula One. The first race was in 1950. There's 67 years of archive plus this season. It's over 500 races. Formula One, the organization, owns the archive. They're digitizing it. They filled up their data center. That's one reason they came to AWS. There isn't enough disk space to do this. So we're putting it on S3. We're going to process it. I want to build a Formula One race fan that is built out of AI image recognition, video recognition, that can look at these videos and say, okay, that's a car, which car is it? That's a celebrity, which celebrity is it? Tag metadata across the entire archive of the sport. 
and then surface that to commentators, to fans, to um, whatever, right? But the first stage is to digitize it and archive it. Think of all the other sports where there is an archive that could be exploited this way. So we've got to index it, we've got to get it going, and there's a whole lot of interesting history here. So what is AWS doing? We're integrating uh, some on-screen video. So we don't actually care which car wins the race. We are on TV anyway. Uh, we didn't put our logo on the car, we put it on TV. Everywhere, every TV broadcast in the world has the AWS logo and we have these things like pit stop strategy and cornering speed that we're analyzing. We also, uh, we prototyped this in Monza. We had about 30 executives come on an executive summit we brought them together, we explained Formula One technology, they got to meet some drivers, they got to meet people like Pat Simmons, who's the CTO of Formula One. Um, the first version of this presentation was part of that, that event. And this, then these people who are race fans have a weekend together sharing their experiences. And you know, we have all different kinds of customers and all kinds of stages in what they're doing and they learn from each other. It's, it's a very powerful experience. So we're planning to do some more of those next year. So what can you learn? What can you learn from the partnership between AWS and F1? So we're using analytics and AI to leverage large volumes of data and we're moving increasingly to real-time AI, real-time inference. Continuous improvement. They get 21 tests. Are they the best team this week? They have no, there's no deadline. You can't like, I'm sorry, I'm shipping that, slipping that release by three days. No, it's happening now. The, the cars are on the grid. If a car doesn't work, you're out. Everything has to be perfect. You get tested every week. Think of that as a, as a metaphor and a, and a way to operate in an extremely competitive setting if you're a business. Highly critical global logistics, the, the shipping of the cars and the technology and the data centers is actually astounding. There's a story there, I have to figure out how to tell it sometime. But the, the story of how they move things around the world is absolutely amazing. It's a world-class operation, just on its own. Real-time strategic decision-making, like by the, you know, in fractions of a second, they have to choose what they're doing. And then they have to build winning teams. And I've got a few minutes left. I'm going to do a, a quiz. I know it's not really a very interactive place here, but I'm going to let you think about this. What can we learn? Here's some top stories from this year. Talent. What's your talent strategy? The top, the top person here, that's uh, Lewis Hamilton. Okay. He just got signed for two-year contract 40 million pounds a year for two years, right? He's the best driver. He's, he just won the championship last week, right? What is it worth to have the best person in the world on your team? Like, that's a strategy, a business strategy you could take. Maybe you're hiring a new CEO and paying them a lot of money, but are they the best? And can they demonstrate they're the best? That's, a, that's one strategy. The next guy down, you probably don't recognize him, is Pierre Gasly. He was uh, driving one of the medium teams. He's about to move up to become Red Bull's second driver along Vers alongside Verstappen. Verstappen turned 21 this year. Like, and he's already in his several seasons in. Gasly, I think, is 20. They're new drivers. They're cheap, relatively. They're not paid a huge amount. They've been developed in. So it's another strategy, talent strategy. Develop, bring up, have a system for developing your talent and then take them to the top level when they're ready. The last guy on there is Lance Stroll. He's actually a pretty good driver, but the reason it's interesting is that his father is a billionaire and his father bought a Formula One team. <laughs> and next year, I think he moves to that team, right? So there's, maybe there's other things you get alongside, you know, when you acquire talent, maybe they have other talents, like they have a large bank account that they can bring with you or something. But there's some interesting uh, variations here. Okay, let's look at product. So you can lose by not having the best talent, right? What about product? The Ferrari is probably the fastest car this year. Most people agree with that. It won a lot of races. But Hamilton was the fastest driver. He beat the, beat the Ferrari. So 
it's, it's been a good, good season because it's been back and forth. Sometimes the fastest driver wins, sometimes the fastest car wins. If the fastest car has the fastest driver in it, they usually just win the championship early. So that's a really good product. The center car here is the Haas car. It's an American team. What most people may not realize is their product strategy was to leverage as many parts from Ferrari as they could possibly get. In all of Formula One, this is the closest there's been to a clone of a car. And the Haas car has been very competitive. It's been one of the best of the rest cars. And it's not as fast as the Ferrari, but it's faster than almost everything else. And it has a very large proportion of Ferrari design technology in it, right? As far as they could go within the rules while still being there constructing the car themselves. So again, this is kind of like, like the strategy of using AWS, right? I don't need to compete. I can buy in all of these parts from the leading cloud provider and build my own stuff on top. So it's a different strategy. And then the last car in here is the McLaren. And they have a big budget, they're a big team, they've won championships, and they've been dead last in a lot of races this year. Internal friction in the company. The, the company was just internally dysfunctional. They fired their lead guy during, halfway through the season, and they basically abandoned the car. They're trying to build a better one for next year. Again, you can have everything perfect, and if your team can't operate, if you can't execute, you'll still fail on the product. You'll build the wrong product. By the way, the difference between the fastest and slowest car in Formula One is 4%. You're 4% slower on lap time, you're hopeless. You're at the back of the grid, 4%. It's like two or three seconds in a minute and a half. That's the difference from the fastest. And sometimes the first few cars are just milliseconds apart. So you need the right product. And if we look at logistics, in this case, I'm taking the pit stop. If you've seen a Formula One pit stop, one of them was in that video. It takes two seconds. The car comes in, stops for two seconds, and goes again with all the wheels changed, all the tires changed. So some teams just crank them out. It's great. But it turns out the fastest pit stop is not doing a pit stop because it takes about 20 seconds to slow down. You get to stop, and then you speed up. So the time it takes out of a lap is 20, 25 seconds because you have to be slow to be safe. And one of the races this year, Hamilton was coming in, and at the last minute, he cut across the grass and basically aborted the pit stop. They reprimanded him, but they didn't penalize him. They said, you probably shouldn't have done that, but it looked safe, so we'll let you go this time. Right? So the fastest way to do something is not do it. That's an interesting way of doing operations. Simplify your operations. And then the Haas team again. The first race of the season, they were running in the points out of the gate, a really competitive car. Everything was great. They did their pit stop. They didn't put the wheels on right for the first car. It pulled away. One of the wheels came off. And then the second car came in, and it happened again. Like, happening twice, that's, that's seriously bad operations, right? They hadn't got their pit crew properly trained. They didn't have their processes right. They lost a huge number of points and, like, massive egg-on-face moment by not having the operations right with a fast car, fast driver. So what do you want? You want perfect, you want the best talent, you want the, the fastest, best product, and you want the best logistics to deliver it. So there's some good lessons we can learn here. OK, so I've told you everything here. I'm just about on time. I'm going to run the video again, OK? So now maybe you can kind of more insight into what's actually going on on screen. Okay, well, thank you. Um, there's uh, another talk on Formula One right after this one in the other half of this hall in the uh, auto tech area. So, you know, happy to try and chat with people, but I want to go see that talk next so, uh, by Graham Hackland. So, thanks very much. Appreciate this. And um, if you want to talk about Formula One or anything to do with AWS, we have a big booth and uh, happy to see everybody. So, thank you very much. Cheers.